I'm supposed to do my heuristic assessment on my Keurig K-Duo Plus coffee maker. As you can see from the picture on the right, uh, it allows you to brew a full pot of coffee or if you remove that you can brew a single cup using the K-Pods that are placed in the back of the machine. Some of the major usability issues that arose from eye testing were a lack of system feedback when trying to make quantity selections uh, during brewing, brewing uh, you're unable to do undo actions once you have chosen the size or amount of water and chosen the middle K button, which is the brew button. You cannot go back or cancel it. You have to wait till the coffee's finished brewing and then restart the process. Um, the button numbers lack familiar symbols for quantity selection. The 6, 8, 10, and 12 indicate ounces and cups, which I only know because I read the instruction manual. It's not obvious just by looking at it. Um, there's no representation of the units being used. So if you're using a full pot of coffee or a cup, 6, 8, 10, and 12 don't really mean much to the average person. I would just assume that 8's like a regular size cup of coffee and a 12 is like a really big cup of coffee or like a full pot of coffee, like it'd be really confusing to differentiate which one's which. And I'd probably assume that the same amount came out no matter which one I press, which is not the case. They have dual functions in this in this case. Um, as this, you can see, some of the pictures um, were taken at night. So uh, when you press the buttons, they're not backlit. Um, and you, when you're brewing a cup of coffee, a single cup, you need to press more than one button, which becomes complicated. You have to choose if you're doing a, a cup or a full pot, the w quantity of water, and then the middle brew button. So since none of these buttons light up and there's no indication on the screen as to what you have just pressed, it's kind of difficult to see and make sure that you're choosing the right buttons. So overall, the four main heuristics that were evaluated by this design were the visibility of system status, user control and freedom, error prevention, and the consistency and standards. For the first one, a visibility of system status. Uh, there's an obvious lack of feedback from the system during use. Um, it is unclear what the machine is doing and how long it will take until it's finished brewing. Apart from listening to it till it stops making noise, it's kind of hard to tell when the pot is full or when your cup is finished. Um, the screen it won't say finished, it won't say complete, um, it doesn't go back to like a home screen, it just constantly says at the time. Um, the buttons are not backlit, so it's hard to know if you press the right one. So there's no feedback in that sense of your selection. Being aware of what's taking place allows you to understand where you're at in the process. So being unable to choose or remember, let's say if you press 6 and then you press the K-cup pod, um, and then you want to brew. If you want to go back and change it, uh, it won't let you. And then, like, you don't know that, so you might just uh, end up pressing a bunch of random buttons, but you're not sure if it, the system will allow you to restart since there's no indicator on the screen. So keeping the user informed is important to show the length of the process and where you're at. Having information on the screen allows you to understand if your actions are being successful. And the second one is the control, user control and freedom. So users can choose functions by mistake and need a clear way to exit or undo them. Uh, like I showed in the previous slide with the buttons, there's no clear way to undo your buttons or your functions or cancel. If you accidentally choose a size that is too large, you cannot cancel it and restart to choose a proper one. You have to wait till the coffee is finished brewing, refill the machine, and restart the process, which could result in you overflowing your cup if you're choosing a size that's too large, wasting coffee, or making it really watery, which is not the desired taste. Uh, there's no clear way to stop the function after the selection has already been made. So you have to remember for future use what you have to press in order to get to a specific outcome as you cannot go backwards. And then it's easy to accidentally press the wrong button as well since they don't light up. Um, it's unclear. Um, 
you should have been able to have like an option to stop mid brewing or change the selection or just like cancel it all together and then go back to like the original home screen to restart the process. So the user doesn't really have control of the situation and has to let the machine run its course before restarting. Oops, went a little too far there. So number three is air prevention. Um, so the system should have a design in place to prevent mistakes from occurring. Um, there's no confirmation of selection in regards to the button or the little screen that shows the timing. Um, if I were to redesign this, I would say like you could have a little screen that shows like the size that was selected and for which option, either a single cup or a full pot. So it doesn't show you how much water is being used. Um, the buttons don't light up to show you which one was pressed or what's currently brewing. You need to trust that the correct button was pressed and do not know until the brewing stops based on how much was in your cup. There's no way to um, gauge that. You just have to let it run its course if you do make an error. So for example, if I chose eight cups for a full pot, then press the K button to brew. It doesn't show what the selection was on the screen or by letting up a button. I just have to trust that that process worked. And then lastly, number four, the last heuristic that violated was the consistency of standards. Oh, sorry, consistency and standards. The main issue I have with this design is a lack of clear buttons and their functions. How to brew a full pot versus a single cup. The trial and error is basically the main way to figure out how to use this machine. Uh, there's also a use of numbers instead of symbols or a combination to indicate dual meaning or dual usage. So if you wanted to have, um, like each button here says ounces or cups, but that's not indicated that it does both or either or. So what I probably would have said, like instead to have two buttons, that it makes it a clear differentiation before between the two so if you want to have a full pot you can choose cups but if you want to do the K pod you can do ounces if you're just having the number six it might um, indicate that it just does one thing or some machines have like a little picture of a cup because I would probably just assume that six is a really small cup of coffee and a 12 meaning a really large cup of coffee there's not really an indication or a scale here so you're using the same symbol and number and number for multiple functions, which is confusing. Very vague symbol representation. Um, and then 6, 8, 10, and 12 is not really consistent with industry norms. Um, a lot of other coffee makers usually have symbols or pictures to show like how full the cup would be. Or you could even do um, two symbols, one for a single cup and one for a full pot, all the way around the K cup button or the K um, button in the center. Also, that K button is supposed to be the brew button or the start or go, but it just says like K for the Keurig symbol. Um, I just kind of figured that out by trial and error. So it's not really consistent with other machines that I've had from this brand in the past, which makes it confusing because. Um, you know, from my own experience using other Keurig machines, they're all kind of the same. Whereas coming to this one, it's like super vague, not a lot of information. You just have to press buttons randomly until you kind of figure it out over time. And yeah, that is basically it for my presentation. Thanks for listening.